I've got some more thoughts for you today on the growing level of aggression we're seeing in dirt racing. Plus, we'll look ahead to tonight's Flow Racing Night in America show at Eldora. Let's go. It's Tuesday, April 18th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. In light of yesterday's show about the issues over the weekend between David Gravel and Carson Macedo and just kind of the general state of dirt racing right now, I wanted to talk today about how aggressive racing has become. And this is something we've discussed before, and I honestly believe it's been a major problem for guys like Donnie Schatz. Schatz very clearly races by a code. He's not going to break that code, and he's going to be highly offended when people break that code racing against him. And if you want a high profile example, go rewatch the 2016 Knoxville Nationals feature. Donnie was furious with Jason Johnson after that one for a couple of Jason's moves. In my comments uh, on the show yesterday and a lot of the comments on social media on Friday night, a big theme of them is the reputation that Carson Macedo seems to have right now about the way he races. And there's no question he's aggressive. I certainly will not disagree with you. He's known to make big moves and throw sketchy sliders, and it's clear that some fans and some of his competitors aren't a big fan of it. But if you look at sprint car racing right now as a whole, throw in non-wing stuff and midget racing, and you can really go deeper than that and even add in other divisions, it's all just been ramped up. We've seen plenty of short sliders recently in dirt late model racing as well. Carson Macedo is not the only guy who's ever fed another driver right rear, and he won't be the last. If you want to talk about the outlaws specifically, you can certainly find examples of every single driver doing it. And especially when it comes to the front runners, the victims are often lap cars. With as closely matched as the racers are right now and with how quickly these races move, guys have to go and they have to go now. And when leaders are working lap traffic, there might only be a chance or two through a 30 lapper to have a decent enough shot of making a move. I think that combined with some high profile younger guys right now becoming contenders, plus the evolution of Kyle Larson and his style and more money than ever being on the line are all big factors here. And I'm not advocating for or against it. it. Just is what it is, and I'm just pointing it out to you. If you watch any Formula One at all, all of this feels very similar to what we see from a guy like Max Verstappen. Especially in open wheel cars, you can't afford to make contact. The consequences are just too negative. And a guy like Verstappen forces his rivals into a choice. He's going to lunge for the gap and you're either going to give him the spot or you're both going to crash. It's sort of a mutually assured destruction situation. Most times it works out in Max's favor, but there are a few instances of guys not relenting and then big crashes being the result. And I think that's what we're uh, often seeing right now in a lot of these dirt races. Is a guy is going to throw a slider that's probably a bit over his head and just hope that the other guy piles on the binders in time. He's giving the slidey that choice. If you want to see an example, watch what David Gravel did to the lapper of Brock Zierfoss, the corner before the Macedo incident at Peevely. Zierfoss avoided the contact, but then gassed it up to turn back underneath Gravel, which then aided in the setup that led to the 41 and 2 getting together in the next set of corners. At the highest level, these run ins don't usually result in crashes because guys are just that good and they can anticipate the move. At lower levels, with younger and less ex uh, experienced drivers, disaster often ensues. As a competitor, I think it's important to remember that you're often going to get raced like you race others. So if your bag of tactics includes short sliders, you should expect some measure of short sliders to be coming your way as well. And that leads me back to the larger point I was making on yesterday's show. Who is at fault or why in that incident between Macedo and Gravel doesn't really matter to me. Your perspective and the way you look at it, all of those things are going to affect you know, what you saw, who you're a fan of, who you're not a fan of. But what I thought was more intriguing was the fact that it spilled out publicly. Even with all of the different characters racing uh, right now across these big series, these types of incidents are usually handled either on track or away from any sort of public attention. So is Friday's issue between Gravel and Macedo a one-off or is it the start of more to come? I think we'll just have to wait and see. But it's clear right now that if you want to win these races, you're either going to have to be the slider or find ways to defend the aggressive moves that are no doubt coming your way. All right, looking ahead to later today, the Flow Racing Night in America series kicks off its 2023 race season tonight at Eldora. The 13 race, mostly midweek late model series, will award close to a million dollars in purse money, plus up to an additional $137,000 in points fund payouts. The champion is guaranteed at least 50,000. If they have perfect attendance, they'll earn 75,000. 
As of yesterday, seven drivers are expected to run the full schedule. They are defending champion Brandon Shepard, Hudson O'Neill, Ricky Thornton Jr., Bobby Pierce, Mike Marler, Tyler Erb, and Garrett Elberson. Following tonight's racing at Eldora, the series will then move to Brownstown tomorrow and then race five times in May before going quiet for the summer. Final six nights will take place in September, October, and November. Other tracks on the schedule include Spoon River, Lincoln, Marshalltown, Davenport, Florence, Fairbury, Tyler County, 411, Tri-County, and Sonoya. It's interesting to look back at 2020 and see the origins of this series. Michael Rigsby, Ben Shelton, Dustin Jarrett, the folks at Flow started running some of these midweek races to get something going again during the pandemic, and it spawned not only this series, but now also the High Limit Sprint Car Series as well. Tonight and tomorrow are both, uh, both 23,000 a win and are uh, expected to draw plenty of heavy hitters. Kyle Larson will be back in the Rumley 6, fresh off of his victory at Volunteer Speedway, and he's going to be up against Hudson O'Neill, RTJ, Jonathan Davenport, Brandon Overton, Bobby Pierce, B. Shep, Devin Moran, Tyler Erb, plenty more. And a lot of these guys will be in action again tomorrow. Larson did win this race a year ago, and I think he'll be a heavy favorite tonight. This is the first race night of the season at Eldora. And they did hold a test and tune over the weekend, although I couldn't find any details on who actually was there outside of a single photo on the Eldora Facebook page. It showed some late models and some open wheel cars, but it was kind of tough to tell who they were. Uh, it'll be a good week to be a late model fan too, as tonight kicks off six straight days of late models on track. You've got flow, uh, the Flow Series the next two nights, the Outlaws on Thursday, plus a bunch of stuff obviously over the weekend. Hot laps are scheduled tonight for 6 p.m. with racing at 7.30. As you probably already realized, the racing will be live on Flow if you cannot get there. Also, as I was looking into stuff for tonight's late model show at Eldora, I took a peek at Kyle Larson's late model stats so far for 2023. He's made 10 starts, has two wins, an average finish of 6.4, and just two finishes worse than sixth. He had a 13th at Volusia and a 28th at Bubba Raceway Park. Also, in the past six months, going back to October of last year, Larson's made 12 dirt racing appearances, and 11 of those have been in a dirt late model. I think when, uh, we can officially call Larson a late model guy here. Don't add me. Uh, four things today on the streaming schedule. Flow Racing, like I said, has the Flow 9 America late models from Eldora, plus Flow Racing 24-7. Dirt Vision has a weekly outlaw cart action from Millbridge uh, and Dirt Vision now. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, head over to dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Hope you guys have a good Tuesday out there. Don't forget it's tax day. Uh, we'll see you right back here tomorrow.